Right off the bat, I want to admit that if I were going to see this question on a practice test or a real test, I would almost certainly have gotten it wrong. I think that this has a little bit of a twist here, something that's hard to understand, and I really think that I would not have gotten this question right using my normal strategy. So I'll explain where I would have gone wrong when I get to it, but it's a hard question. So um, I, I don't love it. I don't love this question, but let's take a look. So the first most important thing to recognize is that we are weakening the explanation, right? So uh, this is why we always have to read the question. Most of the time, it's a very straightforward, what's the main idea, which most logically completes the text, but sometimes the question matters. So make sure you get in the habit of always looking at it. If we don't recognize that it's weakening, then we are completely thinking about this wrong. Now, as I read the passage, I am hopefully going to start to pay most attention when I get to the explanation, but any strong words that come out, I'm going to pay attention to them as well. Many governments that regularly transfer money to individuals to provide supplemental incomes for senior citizens, for example, have long done so electronically, but other countries typically have distributed physical money and have only recently developed electronic transfer infrastructure. Researchers can study the introduction of an electronic transfer system in one such location and found that recipients of electronic transfers consumed a different array of foods than recipients of physical transfers of the same amount did. So that's a strong word, right? What did they do differently? They, they bought different foods. One potential explanation for this result, so here's the explanation, is that individuals conceive of and allocate funds in physical money differently than they conceive of and allocate funds in electronic form. So main ideas are repeated ideas, right? They're buying different foods. They're thinking of money differently. So if we wanted to weaken that, we would probably say that they do it the same, right? There's some similarity. So this is a nice little dumb summary here, very easy. And that just goes to show that just because they're asking for us to weaken the conclusion doesn't mean that it's going to be very hard to come up with some sort of summary. We just take what they said and we flip it. And, and sometimes it's as simple as like using an opposite word. So now we go to the choices and hopefully we hear that they're doing things in the same way. So A, recipients of electronic transfers typically spent their funds at a slower rate than recipients of physical transfers did. Well, that sounds like it actually is a difference, right? So this is this sounds like a difference to me. It's a difference of maybe a, a, a quantity, right? So we've got our con our uh, typical um, uh, trans uh, trap answer reasons. So it's a quantifier. It's a bit of a comparison, though. Uh, comparisons aren't so bad here. We we seem to be you know making one in the passage, so making one here ain't so bad. Um, and then I just don't remember them talking about the rate though, right? They're buying different foods. They're thinking of money, conceiving of and allocating funds differently, but the rate of, of it doesn't really seem to come into this. But again, we want to say that they're the same. So if they said they were doing it at the same rate, okay, maybe that's better, but this seems to be supporting the conclusion, not weakening it, not undermining it. So we can get rid of that. Um, B, nearly every recipient of an electronic transfer withdrew the entire amount in physical money shortly after receiving the transfer. To me, this is just like a who cares choice. This just feels kind of random, though I don't really have a good reason to get rid of it uh, other than that, right? But that's not the best kind of reason. I usually love to kind of focus in on a word or a phrase and say, this is my reason to get rid of it. So for, for that, I, I don't I don't really understand this. I don't really care about what they withdrew. Like It just seems random to me. So I wouldn't necessarily cross it out. But it doesn't seem to support my my dumb summary here. It just it just seems like a random thing. I, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's the same because they're the money is the same whether it's put in electronically or taken out physically. But I'm already doing more work than I probably would on a test about this choice. I would just kind of be like, yeah, this is random. Let me leave it in, but let me move on. Um, C, recipients of physical transfers tended to purchase food about as frequently as recipients of electronic transfers did. Well, about as frequently sounds like the same, right? So they're saying they're the same in some way. So that seems pretty good. I would keep that in and move on. D, some recipients of physical transfers receive small amounts of money relatively frequently, while others receive large amounts relatively infrequently. Well, again, that doesn't sound like a similarity because they're getting different amounts of money. But also, we're not comparing the right thing. We want to compare the physical money to the electronic. This is only about the physical, right? And unless I'm missing something here, but this choice is only about physical money. We, How are we undermining the conclusion if we're not even talking about the electronic money at all? So this feels very obviously wrong. And this is where I would have just picked C and moved on. But I'd be wrong. C is not the answer. And I would have been very confident. I do not think I would have bookmarked this. I would have just been like, yep, my dumb summary matches. We're good to go. The answer is B, though. So again, 
I would have been wrong on this question. I am pretty confident that I would have gotten this wrong. And would have been annoyed about it too, because I would have not bookmarked it. Usually I know where I'm going to go wrong. I'm between two choices. I'm debating them and I'm like, ah, I got to make a call. Uh, let's just pick this one. But this is not the case like that. I, I would be pretty sure that C is right. So what's going on? Well, the, I guess one thing that I'm kind of ignoring in choice C is that they're bringing in the concept of time. But time doesn't seem to matter in the passage, right? They're, they're not talking about how frequently they spend the money. They're talking about them spending money on different foods, right? A different array, a different variety of foods. So the, the, the rate is kind of not really part of this. And, and maybe that's almost the same reason that we got rid of A, though A is talking about different rates. This is talking about a similarity. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It feels close to me. Um, I, I, the, I guess here's the, the, the issue with this. Well, let's talk about B, I guess. Nearly every recipient of an electronic transfer withdrew the entire amount in physical money shortly after receiving the transfer. So if we really focus on this sentence here, this last sentence where they talk about the explanation, the explanation for the different array of foods is that they conceive of and allocate funds differently. So if they conceive of and allocate funds the same way, then to them, it's all money, right? And, and that's kind of what B is saying is that they get this electronic transfer, it goes in their bank account, but then very quickly, they're just taking it out and just using it as physical money. So to them, it doesn't really matter that it was given electronically. It, it's just money either way. They're spending it at the store with bills, regardless of how it is given to them, whether they're just given the bills directly or whether they're given them electronically, they have paper money that they're going to the store with. So I guess if they're withdrawing it the entire way, like it is the same, it's just money to them. So that would weaken the explanation in the passage because then there, there is no difference between the way they conceive of, think about money. It's all money. Now, again, I, I still feel like C is close, but the other thing I, I think I'm not necessarily considering is that we're supposed to weaken the explanation. So again, this comes down to the last sentence. Maybe in my mind, the problem is I'm trying to also weaken this part here, that they're spending the money and, and in different ways and, and buying different foods. That part is not up for debate, according to the passage. That part is true, right? We, we have this finding. They are getting different kinds of money and some of them are buying, you know, I don't know, potatoes and turnips and others are buying, I don't know, the, Doritos, who cares? It doesn't matter, right? They're buying different things. So they're, they're supposed to be, this is so hard to even talk about, that part is not up for debate. That part is supposed to be the same. And we are trying to explain why they're buying different things, not undermine the fact that they are buying different things. That part cannot be undermined or weakened. That part they're saying is true no matter what. We are trying to explain why that is true. And so in my head, I guess, Choice C is a better choice because it also is maybe weakening the claim that they're buying different foods. Because if they're just taking them out and buying the food at different at the same rate, then it doesn't matter. It's just it's just all the same foods, I guess. It doesn't talk about the variety of foods, but the rate seems to be kind of like, well, it's all the same. But that's that's supposed to be still true. And then what they're saying, these this this explanation is that. The reason that they buy different foods is that they think of the money differently. So if they are withdrawing the money as cash right away, then it's not thought of as different. We don't have a good explanation now of why they're buying different foods. We would need a new one. That's beyond what the passage is doing. But that's supposed to be what we're doing is we're not necessarily disputing the idea that they're buying different foods. We are disputing the explanation for why they're buying different foods. And I guess B does that better. You can hear probably the frustration in my voice. I think C is too close. I think it's too close of a choice. But, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Is this, maybe I'm making a bigger deal. Maybe I'm just falling for some trap that I'm not seeing. But, uh, you know, I've read the College Board explanation about this. They they say that B is better because of the, the, con the conception of the money. They say that C is wrong because of what I said, the time issue, the, the frequency is not really talked about in the passage. I get it. But, you know, this might be one of those rare cases where if we use the strategy of dumb summaries, it leads us astray. It, it, B has nothing to do with something being the same, in my opinion. But I kind of see it when I really work it out. The dumb version 
makes me eliminate that choice. But if I really think about it, I can kind of see why B is right. Um, but if I think about the dumb version of C, it's an easy fit. And that's the thing with any SAT strategy. There is nothing that works perfectly every single time. Occasionally, the strategy might lead you astray. But, you know, if it works 85, 90, 95 percent of the time, that's a great strategy. And hopefully we can deal with the weird situations. Maybe this is just a weird situation. Let me know what you think in the comments.